all new Dr. Phil. He left his dying wife for another woman. She claimed to be part of the Kennedy family. I have never met Misty. But you proposed to her. Now, Misty Kennedy says she was in a horrible car accident. Did she pass as well? My dad told me that he had received a phone call from Misty from heaven. From heaven. Right. Now, come on. Help me out here. You're supposed to help me out. Or is it all a scam? She was not in that car. On the Kennedy family tree, there is no Misty Kennedy. What will the search? I trace Misty's phone to this home. For his missing fiance. We were shocked to find out the truth. Uncover. This girl does exist. She is... Trisha and Danielle are devastated because they say their dad left their dying mom's bedside, a woman he had been married to for 30 years. They say he left the bedside to pursue an online relationship with a woman who claims to be a Kennedy. Yes, that's right. Third cousin to John F. Kennedy, to be exact, and an heir to a $23 million fortune. Their parents were married for decades, and this Kennedy affair has ripped their family apart. Take a look. My parents' love for each other was unconditional. I always saw them as best friends. Everything changed when my dad met a woman named Misty online. It started out as a friendship. I fell in love with her. She fell in love with me. She promised that we would be together forever. When my mom found the messages, it made her feel heartbroken and unloved. In the midst of the Misty situation, my mom started feeling sick. My dad noticed something was seriously wrong. My mom was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia and sick. The survival rate is zero. My mom was very sad on that my dad wasn't there. He'd leave the hospital room to take calls from Misty. My dad basically abandoned my mom. I felt very disgusted. My mother asked me to actually contact Misty. The messages that I sent Misty came from a very hateful place. I was defending my mother and my family. The death that my mother went through was very excruciating. I definitely believe that my mom passed away with a broken heart. My heart went the other way. It wasn't Misty's fault. My dad destroyed our lives for a woman he's never met. Well, Tricia and Danielle say their father was hooked the minute he met Misty because she offered him a life that he could only dream of. When Misty Kennedy first started talking to my dad, she claimed to be a real part of the Kennedy family. Part of the JFK line. She said she lived on a property in Virginia, a very large, elaborate farm with the guards and the whole nine yards. She said that she had inherited a couple million dollars and that she wanted to share that money with my father and give him the luxury houses, the boat, cabins, cars, everything that she had. He was going to be receiving. Misty went as far as to have a gentleman call and pretend to be at her attorney and say that my father would become conservator of her estate. My dad wants what everybody wants, the big dream, and she offered it. She offered it times a million. You are really upset with your dad. Yes. And obviously, I'm very sorry for your loss. Mm -hmm. That was very difficult. That's a very serious illness. It moves quickly. And from the time your mother was diagnosed till she passed was a, a very short window, right? 44 days. 44 days from diagnosis to, to, to passing. Okay, and you said he was at the hospital taking calls and going out and talking to Misty out in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Y'all feel like it really hastened her demise. On her illness, she was so stressed, so distraught. And it didn't help when you're supposed to be in a time of being positive and thinking that you have a chance to fight something that your husband's having an affair. All right, now, did this Misty Kennedy, did she even get involved in his thinking about what to do when your mother passed? From what I understand, Misty Kennedy. I told my father, you have her cremated. It's less expensive. It's less stress. So the woman he's dealing with while your mother is fighting a life-threatening illness, when she passes, she weighs in and says, well, let's cremator it would be cheaper yes was she cremated no okay Tricia and Danielle 
are fed up with their father because they say he abandoned the family and their mother. Now, he's in a band, and Misty loved his music, and Ron fell for her big time. Take a look. The feeling I had when I first met Misty, it was just a friendship, but it just progressed from there. The more we talked, uh, the more she fell in love, the more I fell in love with her. She loved the kids. She loved me deeply. She was into what I did for a living. She listened to our music. She loved the music. Everything was beautiful about it. She felt that I was her first love that she ever had. Misty and I talked about having kids. When Misty told me about the Kennedy family, it was cool. I was really honored to even have her part of my life. Misty and I both decided that she wanted to buy a nice home up in Traverse City, Michigan, up on the bay. We were going to use it for a vacation home. And when I proposed to her, I felt that she was the one. I felt that by the way she had spoke to me and shared her love. I mean, she shared her whole, whole world with me. I was excited when she said yeah and her plans of wanting to go to Hawaii for the honeymoon. Misty wanted to marry in Nashville. She wanted to get married at the Opry. Misty had her own dress designed and paid a lady out of New York a lot of money to have this originally done for her. And that was the only thing that she wanted to do was to wear that dress. She just had a lot of beautiful things that she wanted to do. Ron, do your daughters here have a reason to be upset with you? They do. They do. But they're upset because, A, you left their mother, B, you got involved with somebody else while you were still married, and then were actively involved with her while their mother, your wife, was fighting for her life. And that's offensive to their sensibilities, obviously. Right. Does that, do you understand I that? I understand what they're saying. And, uh... It was all just a friendship thing. Things progressed. Their mother was upset about it, and that's when things started going downhill. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about who this Misty Kennedy is. Um, she is a Kennedy heir to a $23 million fortune, 34 years old, younger than you, mm -hmm. uh, gorgeous. Um, she said she was a brain surgeon at one point but actually a, a registered nurse? She is a registered nurse for a uh, cardiologist. Okay. Did she tell you she was a brain surgeon? No, no. Where did that come she, from? I In the very know. beginning, that's what she told you, and that's what you told no, me. No, she was a registered nurse for a cardiologist. Okay. That she has multiple mansions, homes, a brother named Chad, and a father named Herbert. A at what point did you realize you were in love with this woman? Uh, probably three months, four months after I had met her. Mm -hmm. I think things progressed um, a lot more than friendship. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say met her and fell in love, you mean met her online? Met her online, yes. Have you ever sat with her? Have you ever touched her hand? Have you ever... Never. I've never met Misty. But every you proposed time, to her. Every time there was a chance to meet her, there was always something. And I did. November 13th, 15th, mm -hmm. I did. Probably six weeks after my wife was gone. Mm -hmm. 30 days. <clears throat> no. You want clarity and answers, right? I do. You want to find out what's going on and where things are. I do. Because this is tearing your family apart. I understand that. And we've had a lot of issues over it, and uh, especially me and Tricia. Well, let's take a break, and then we are going to focus on Misty. That's what you want clarity on. That's what we're going to do. Next, Misty says she was in a horrible car accident. Imagine surviving that. Well, Misty did. Ron thought it was a miracle. His daughters thought it was very suspicious. We'll talk about that as the mystery surrounding Misty is getting ready to unfold. Misty was 
suddenly in a very serious car accident in Virginia. The car was completely mangled. Just a part of the Kennedy family was in a rollover in the mountains. And miraculously survived. I'm sure we would all know about it. And later... I have traveled 12, 13 hours to meet Misty. I don't know if I have strength enough to go to the door. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. My son was diagnosed with schizophrenia. What goes on? Craig built a zombie killer gun. In this young man's mind. Do you hear voices in your head? Sometimes. What do they say? Is he dangerous? I get these fantasies of walking into a store and just blowing people's heads off. And why did seeing this woman... I didn't know she was coming. ...set him off? Have a seat. No, I'm done. That's tomorrow. Ron met a woman uh, by the name of Misty Kennedy and fell madly in love. But his daughters are just mad. They, they say Dad spent more time pursuing Misty than caring for their dying mom. Now they want Dad to realize that this Kennedy of his is cursed. Things were adding up with what Misty was saying to my dad. When dad had told me that Misty was part of the Kennedy family, I went on to Google and found that she was not on the family truth. There was no Misty Kennedy in the Kennedy family. She claimed to be a brain surgeon, and when that lie wasn't working out, then it turned into Misty was a nurse that worked next to a brain surgeon. She was suddenly in a very serious car accident in Virginia. My dad had sent me the pictures of the car accident. The car was completely mangled. There would be no way that she could have survived that accident. I did think it was very unusual that Misty was always having some type of a cancer or something traumatic happening to her. She said she was in Virginia getting treatment, and at one point she was supposed to be in the cancer treatment centers of Arizona, which I called. They'd never heard of her. She even went as far as saying she was on the 13th floor. They don't have a 13th floor. From there, she was saying she was taking private jets out to hospitals in California where they had better technology to treat what she was supposedly ill with. I feel like Missy's claims on who she is and her fortunes and all of her life conquests have been the biggest amount of lies. Okay, tell me about this car wreck. Did you talk to her after, soon after that car wreck? And then we'll talk about the illness part. Uh, it was probably four or five days after the wreck had happened. <clears throat> um, other than that, her brother had stayed in contact with me over at... Chad Kennedy. Yes, Chad. Um, kept me updated on what was going on, um, the surgeries that she had on her brain for the bleeding. Almost every other day, they were taking her back in to do surgeries to stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. Well, this picture was taken April 13th in Montana. Uh, the person driving the car... Uh, and I'm, I'm reading you a statement from Carl Hokum. He says this picture was taken uh, in Montana. The person driving the car was my friend, and he was killed. So we, we were able to trace that picture, and the car was being driven by a male friend of Carl Holcomb, and he did not survive. He was killed in that car wreck, and that car wreck was in Montana. Misty Kennedy yeah. was not in that car. What a sad situation that somebody could use such a tragic thing to cover up something that they wanted me to believe. Why do you suppose she would lie to you about that? I don't know. I mean, this was an ongoing thing, too, and even her brother uh, has supported everything that she has said. Now, Misty Kennedy had a Facebook profile picture of an actress, uh, an actress, Alexis, I think it's Bedell. Yeah. 
that was the picture that she was using on her Facebook to start with, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did she say about using this picture? I never confronted her about it. I mean, I just let it be what it was. The kids had um, said something on Facebook about it. Uh, after I think that she had read what they put on there, that's when the pictures disappeared. Yeah, but now, come on, Ron, just one old bald country boy to another. <laughs> you, you're telling me you didn't throw the flag when you see? No, because I don't know of this Alexis Bridell, so I didn't know. So I didn't. I don't know. I don't somebody know. asked her about it, and she said she just put it up there because that was her idol, right? Yes. That's that it's we like somebody puts a picture of their yeah, dog up or their cat or something like that. Yeah. Instead of putting up Fluffy, she put up Alexis. Right. <laughs> right? Right. I mean, right. come on. I don't know this Alexis, so I never met her, so I don't know if this was her photo or whose it was. Yeah, it was a very attractive picture. I, very. I, yeah. All right, up next, uh, Ron and Misty, um, I mean, are they a match made in heaven? Just when we thought we had heard it all, you're not even going to believe where Misty says she is currently living. We'll be right back. Ron fell for Misty online while his own wife was fighting for her life, which certainly upset his family. And then a shocking twist. Misty began to have medical issues of her own. I was very heartbroken over my wife with her cancer and then finding out Misty had cancer. It was like a tragedy. She got twice. Misty did have leukemia, same as Cindy had. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I just watched my wife suffering through this, and Misty was in the same position, and it just flipped my world. When Misty found out she had cancer, he took part of her colon out, but it spread into her kidneys and her stomach area and her liver and pancreas and throughout her body. They ended up taking her kidney. They removed her stomach and put an artificial stomach in. They ended up giving her a heart transplant because of the chemo and making her so weak. Then after that, the cancer went to her brain. Ended up going into cardiac arrest and passing away. I feel like I lost everything. Felt like my whole world crashed. Well, once Misty passed away, Ron expected the calls from his fiance to stop, obviously. Misty contacted me nine days after they had said that she had passed away, said that she was with God in heaven, that he was going to make things pure for her and bring her back, and that someday we may be back together again, and that he would send her back to me. Dad had told me that he had received a phone call from Misty from heaven. What type of service is up there? AT&T, Sprint, Verizon? <laughs> Well, <laughs> fair question. Uh, I've seen the commercials. I've, I, I've pulled up the map. Um, <laughs> I don't see a single dot um, up in the blue. Now, That's heaven on earth. Now, come on. <laughs> H help me out here. Um, You're supposed to help me out. Yeah. But right now, people all over America are saying, what? what? Run it back. R run it back a minute. So uh, let me understand this. On July 17th, she dies. She, she has cancer and she dies, but she's revived. But she only lasts until July 19th, and then she dies for the second time? Possibly the third. <laughs> well, she may have died in the car crash, right? Mm -hmm. Then she died of cancer. Then she died again on the 19th. But this time, it sticks. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Because you soon are communicating 
with her from heaven with the help of Chad, her brother. Right. How do you call her in heaven? How do you I do that? I don't call her. You call him? I No, if I have to talk, um, she'll need to call me. Or if I call Chad, then Chad texts her. And then she, she'll call me later. Chad I mean, texts her in heaven and then yes. she calls you. I, that's the way it goes. Okay. Um, which we all know. He knows which, she's not calling from Right, we know that. And oh, well, so you do. You, but oh, when yeah, you I'm first heard that, what, what, that did, what did you all. say when you, when, you, when you first heard from her or heard that you could talk to her? I was twisted. I mean, come on. I mean, there's, it's impossible. If that's the case, why hasn't my wife called yeah. I mean, well, or she may not be way. speaking to you. Well, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sure she would. I mean, uh, well, she would have a lot to say. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, at Misty claims that she, her brother Chad, and their father Herbert are all part of the Kennedy family, right? Right. Okay, so let's take a look. I have the Kennedy family tree here. And let me tell you, there is no Misty Kennedy, there is no Chad Kennedy. There is no Herbert Kennedy. Very confusing. We have been on an investigative journey that you are not going to believe. I'm going to tell you who you've been talking to. I'm going to tell you who, where this is all coming from. Ron's family said enough is enough, and they decided to track Misty down. Well, watch what happened when Ron decided to confront Misty himself. I have traveled 12, 13 hours to meet Misty and to know who she really is. I want to meet Misty face to face. Let's go get some video of the real Misty Kennedy. And what I would like to see happen today is find the truth about who she really is. Why she did what she did. Maybe tell me what her real name is if it's not Misty Kennedy. Misty just texts me. I traced Misty's phone number to this home right here. That's heaven. I'm asking her what she is doing in heaven. I don't know if I have strength enough to go to the door to ask her if that's who this really is. My stomach feels nervous. I feel that it may be a danger zone there with other vehicles there. There's somebody outside right now. I think that is her brother. But I want to take another look, so I want to go back. Now I think it's up to Dr. Phil to help me and bring her into the show somehow and confront her. Well, coming up, we did begin an investigation of our own. Even we, I, I have to say, and I don't say this often, we were shocked to find out the truth. for over a year now, except they've never met. Uh, Ron came to me asking for help in uncovering the mystery behind the woman he believes is the love of his life. What I, I, I want to do is take you through an investigative chain that we've gone through, and I'm going to do it okay. over here. Why don't you take my seat so right. you can see. Um, okay. Now, first, we have... Misty Kennedy, this is Misty Kennedy's website. And on it, you see an array of pictures. We wanted to find out if these were real or what was going on. So we began to do a search, particularly on the flag picture up here, to see if it showed up anywhere else on the internet. And sure enough, we found 
that that picture shows up on a photographer's website. So we then went to that photographer's personal website, and lo and behold, we find this whole array of misty pictures. And we go, wow, okay. Now, at that point, we find out that a friend of the owner of the photography website is actually the mother of the girl in the picture. We find the mother of this girl in the picture. So we're starting to get somewhere. And this phone number that you've provided us, we find out, is registered to a particular address that you drove a long way to get to. So we know that this cell phone is registered to the particular address. Interestingly enough, we find out that the mother of the girl in the picture is married to the son of a 65-year-old woman who lives at the address where that phone is registered. <laughs> wow. This girl, Misty Kennedy, does exist. She is, she's 14 years old. Oh, nice. Nice. And I want to be clear to everybody that your belief is that this is a 34-year-old woman. Right. You were not consorting with 14-year-old child. No, not at all. In fact, it is my belief that you have been consorting with a 65-year-old woman. <laughs> oh, my. She has access to the photos. She lives at the house where the phone is registered. She's retired and has lots of hours to be talking to you. And we found some other similarities as well. Misty Kennedy's birthday and the 65-year-old's birthday are the same. Misty Kennedy says her father's named Herbert. The 65-year-old woman's father really is named Herbert. She has a Ronald Reagan video on her Facebook. The identical video is on the 65-year-old woman's Facebook. She's not a big fan of Obama's. No. The 65-year-old woman's not a big fan of Obama's. She died the first time on July 17th. This woman had a back procedure on July 17th. They have the same cell phone. They have the same photos on their Facebook pages. Well, you know what? We tracked down the mother of the girl in the photo. You won't believe what she has to say. We'll be right back. all-new Dr. Phil. They believe their son is schizophrenic. You are hearing voices sometimes. Dangerous. I have fantasies of killing people. And uncontrolled. Have a seat. No, I'm done. That's tomorrow. Well, we're back with my guest, Ron, who just learned that the woman in the photos he believed to be his 34-year-old fiance, Misty Kennedy, uh, were actually photos of a 14-year-old girl off the Internet. Now, again, I, I want to be clear. Ron had no idea that he was talking to a 14-year-old girl, and in my belief, he was not. In, in case you're wondering about displaying all these pictures of a minor, which, as you know, over the last 12 years, we just don't do, for the purposes of this discussion, we substituted in some pictures in place of her actual pictures so you could follow the chain of evidence. So we have maintained the confidentiality of this 14-year-old child. She has no idea that her identity has been stolen whatsoever. Tell me what you're thinking 
right now. You came to me for answers. I'm giving you answers. I'm disgusted with it. I mean, what kind of person could do this, you know? I mean, to mess with somebody's whole family. She's messed with you. For 17 months. At the weakest moment in your life. You know, one of the most highest profile catfish cases that we've seen in America was the Renaya Tuiasasopo and Manti Teo case, the linebacker from Notre Dame that was being talked to by the by the man Renaya Tuiasasopo, who I did the interview with um, about that. And um, it was interesting that when things started getting dicey, he killed her off, the woman he was pretending to be. You see the pattern here. Right. Exactly the same thing. Gets in trouble, panics, kills her off. Then says, well, okay, she's not actually dead. Let's, let's try to work this out. I know everybody's asking, who does this? What kind of person does this stuff? Twisted. They're twisted people that they don't they don't care about people. I mean, look what they've done to my kids, me, my wife. I, I got to know that I've gotten through to you here. Oh, totally. She doesn't I mean, exist. Right. And right. Yeah, there could have been a lot of reasons. Could be that she was nervous. Could be that she didn't want to face you. Could be that she, I don't know, whatever. But I'm telling you, that's not true. There is no Misty Kennedy, right. and the person behind Misty Kennedy appears to be uh, a 65-year-old woman living in this house up there entertaining herself with your life. We tracked down the mother of the girl whose picture was stolen and used as Misty Kennedy. Ron, did you want to say anything to the mother of this girl? I want to complete this circle. We tracked down the mother of the girl whose picture was used as Misty Kennedy. I spoke to her before the show because she had no idea that her daughter's photo was being used to lure a man for an online relationship. Listen to this call. I have a producer there with you right now, correct? Yes, sir. All right, and this producer has in an envelope a picture of the person that lives in the house where the phone that's being used as, as the Misty Kennedy false identity using your daughter's picture we have that. I'm going to ask Jim to hand you that envelope right now. Open that envelope and see if you know who it is. If you recognize them in any way. Have you seen the picture? Yes. And who is the picture? That is my mother-in-law. Michelle, take a deep breath and talk to me. I'm trying. I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I am blown away. We could not have been more shocked. And, you know, what we know is that this is a cell phone. The registered owner of this cell phone is that address. Yeah. And those pictures that are on the Misty Kennedy website are also on her website. Yeah. She has access to those pictures. Yes. Tell me about this woman. What What do you know about her? I had a suspicion this morning, because when I said something to her, she got silent. The phone you have now, that number, is no longer exists. Uh-huh. Well, what do you think about that phone being disconnected? That is that out of the ordinary? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally <laughs> out of the ordinary. She lives with that in her hands. My husband told her last night that stuff had been stolen. That pictures had been stolen? Yes. And her exact words was, 
is not me, and he said, we didn't say it was. She just volunteered it's not me? Yeah. And she was like, well, when you find out, you let me know, because this is some sick person. You're right, it's some sick person. Well, you can see the mother, who we're referring to as Michelle, was extremely upset. Um, a, to find out that her daughter's pictures were being used in this way, and two, that it was a family member that was doing it. In fact, she's joining us by phone right now. Michelle, are you there? Yes. Thank you so much for staying with us. You do understand that Ron here had no idea that the pictures he was looking at were a 14-year-old girl. Yes. Um, Ron, did you want to say anything to the mother of this girl? Uh, I'm sorry that this happened. Um, it was something that I fell into. I do uh, apologize for everything that went on because of this. Um, I understand it's hard for you two, as much as it is me, knowing that they used your daughter for this. Well, both of you are victims. Do you have any doubt that it's her that's doing this? No, I really be I, I believe it. Is there any other woman that would have access to that phone? No, sir. Is there any other woman that lives in that house? No, sir. I would like to know who this child person is. Well, there is a man that lives in that house, and that's her husband, correct? Yes, sir. Is there any other man that lives in that house? No, sir. Is there any other man that has access to that phone? No, sir. Well, I now have a new phone number uh, for this woman, and when we come back from the break, I'm going to dial it, and we're going to see if Misty Kennedy will talk to us. We have been trying to unravel a mystery. A woman identifying herself as a heir to the Kennedy uh, fortune, a member of the Kennedy clan. Misty Kennedy has been talking to Ron for 17 months. Now that people start to close in on this suspected uh, person, the phone gets turned off. Well. There's a new phone number, and we have it, and I'm going to try it right now. Now, I understand the pattern is you would typically call, it would go to voicemail or whatever, and then they would call back, right? Mm -hmm. She seldom picks up on the first right. ring, correct? Correct. Right. 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 So we, yeah, we may have to get a... Um, Direct line to heaven? Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. If she answers, just... Say hello. Talk to her. If she does answer. Hi, I'm sorry. I can't answer the phone right now, but please send your name, a number, and a message, and I'll call you back. Thanks. Okay. That's your voice. Yep. So that's Misty's voice. Yep. That's the new number that the 65-year-old woman has that she gave to her daughter-in-law. So that's her. Mm -hmm. okay. You've been very upset with your father at this point. Do you have compassion for the fact that he's been a victim in this as well? Oh, I definitely have compassion for my father. I'll always love my dad. He's my dad. But to watch him turn his back on our mother and our family. It's a lot to come back from. But you want to do that. Of course. And, 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 and let me tell you, when, when, when this sort of thing happens, um, and, and you know, I, I've, I've worked with people that have, yeah. have been through this, and Ron, they describe it as a death and a grieving process. I mean, this is a woman that was your future. This is someone that you expected to spend your life with. How do you feel about this woman? Angry. Hurt. I 
feel disgusted, used, betrayed. Um, I just don't understand why they would do this. And it's wrong. I mean, there's a lot of twisted people out there that you really got to watch for. And I got pulled into something that thanks to you and your team, investigators, that discovered all this and brought me to reality with it. I have to say that we're alleging that it's her. We, we don't know. It sounds like her to you, and maybe I'll get a chance to, to talk to her. Thank you. Right. Thank you I'm very sorry much. that you had to hear this, but I'm glad that you know it. Right. Thank you, thank you so much, thank guys. You. I want to thank all of my guests today, and if you want to learn how to protect yourself from being a victim of a catfish, go to drphil.com for more information. We'll see you next time. Thank you.